Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen to our fifth and final speaker in these finals. Um, he is a psychologist, he's a trainer, he's an author, uh, he teaches at the University of Amsterdam, and uh, he's an expert on uh, something similar to a leader's block, but, but even a more difficult condition maybe, stress and burnout. And this is something that we are, we are I'm sure everybody has experienced stress in this room. If you are in business, you know what stress is about. But there's a lot of things about stress we do not understand. And this is what our next speaker, who all, uh, the author of uh, Quarter Life, Millennium Manifesto, and I just got a book from him uh, called Crazy Busy. Sounds like my kind of book. Thank you so much for that. But what do we get wrong about stress? Thijs Lanspach, welcome. Thank you. My best friend is called Felix. I met him when I was 16, and we were both long-haired hard rockers. We were into beer, and we were into Iron Maiden, so we bonded. Felix has a huge tattoo of the skyline of Amsterdam across his chest and both his arms, but you can't see it when he wears a dress shirt. He's someone you can call in a crisis situation, and he'll come and help, but not without mocking you Relentlessly. He's, only the, he's also the only person that I know that still converts euros back to guilders in his head. And Felix is someone who can push himself so hard. When he wants to achieve something, he writes down every step in between and starts to take them, no matter what happens. And just between you and me, he can be stubborn as hell. But it's the same stubbornness that he's had to depend on for all of his life, because he never got anything in life for free. It's the same stubbornness that took him from growing up in a difficult part of Amsterdam to where he is now, the managerial position in a finance department, the salary, the Tesla, the nice office. And back in 2022, Felix was trying to combine the responsibilities of two full free full-time roles at the same time. And I have never seen anyone work as hard as he did then. Get up at six to talk to the Asia team. Sure. Need this document first thing tomorrow. I will work late. Need me to respond to emails during meetings. Sure, I can multitask. And with every step he took, they just gave him more to do. And he plowed on in his own Felix way, but it started to show. Work felt like a drag. He was awake at night, mulling over his to-do list. Exercise, family time, fun, friends, it all had to go. Until one day, even for Felix, the stress just became too much. And Felix has been home now for about eight months, and he's doing well, although he still hasn't fully recovered yet. But I can again see the old Felix that I've had all of these adventures with. He's sure about one thing, though. He is not going back. And I remember times in my career when I felt a bit like Felix, and I'm sure you've had those moments too. For me, it was months where work was never not on my mind. Weeks I had to scramble to meet all demands. People were depending on me, and I couldn't let them down, now could I? But all of these interesting things I was doing kept me up late, losing sleep. And if I'm honest, my work ethic was eating away at my health, making me unhappy and a less pleasant person to be around. Today, however, I basically have the best job on the planet. As a psychologist, I write and speak about mental health, and I get to talk to loads of people all of the time, and they tell me what's on their mind. And through my work, I get to meet teachers and lawyers and care workers and students and entrepreneurs and managers, soldiers and CEOs, and they all have a story. And I get to listen. And here are some of the things that I've learned. We are crazy busy. Our days are filled up with meetings, deadlines and targets. And at work, we strive to be the best versions of ourselves. And on top of that, we're blasted with news updates, emails and notifications that keep us occupied every waking hour and awake for even more hours. Now, being a bit busy isn't necessarily a problem, of course. In fact, a bit of stress can actually be good for you. 
Uh, stress is just the way that your body and mind reacts to a situation that needs your undivided attention, whether that's nearly avoiding an accident on the road here in Helsinki or giving a potentially career-shaping presentation. It's just something that's there. You don't have to be too afraid of stress. In fact, you, you sometimes need a bit of stress to get you going. Chronic stress, though, that's the stress, the stress you stay in for longer periods of time, the stress you don't really recover from. That's the stress that leads to motivation issues, health problems, and eventually even burnout. Stress is universal. From the boardroom to the garbage facility, virtually everyone has to deal with stress in some way. It's just part of the way we work and live. For some, it's merely a minor inconvenience. And for some, it's a daily challenge to keep up with all demands from home and from work. And some, like Felix, burn out completely. And we are in a burnout epidemic. And epidemic is a big word, even controversial, I know, but I do use it consciously. In my country, one in seven workers report having to deal with so much stress that is dangerous and unhealthy. And in some sectors, like education and healthcare, that's not one in seven, that is one in five. And people who burn out, who burn out sustain so much stress that they, for such a long time that they essentially break down and they have to stay home and recover, often for months. And if that hasn't been you, you probably know some people that went through that. And these numbers may vary from country to country, and this is also due to different ways of conceptualizing burnout, but this is a global phenomenon. And we still treat stress and burnout as individual problems, as problems within the individual. And in part, of course, that's true. Some people are just a bit more vulnerable to stress than other people because of their individual psychological makeup or because of something bad that happened to them in the past, because of a mismatch between the job that they're doing and the talents that they have, or because they're dealing with all kinds of stuff in their private lives. Divorce, disease, financial hardship, in addition to the stress from work. And all of that may be true, and it partly explains why some people burn out and others don't. But here's the thing. There's this crucial thing we forget, the thing we get wrong about stress. And I'm sorry to say this, but it is also a work problem. As much as we individualize the problem, people also get sick from their environments. And as we spend a huge portion of our time at our jobs, our mental health is also thoroughly affected by our work environment. Work environments that in our time, regretfully, often make us ill. The productivity culture within companies can be toxic. Productivity is great. It's our contribution to the world. It's also what we're paid for. But there comes a point where productivity culture becomes damaging. So when is a productivity culture damaging? Well, when people feel they have to be responsive. And emailing at nights and in weekends is expected, if not encouraged. Environments where people are pushed to come in early, stay late, skip their breaks, in order to finish that one little project that just must be done today. Environments where talking about stress is taboo and tall tales about all-nighters are considered virtuous. And this is what I worry about. We are building work environments that are toxic, that treat people as productivity machines and not like human beings. And here's the thing. It's incredibly difficult to remain healthy in an unhealthy environment. You can be as resilient as you can be. You can have a stable foundation. You can be brimming with self-confidence and still be negatively affected by a toxic work environment. And it doesn't have to be like this. There are, we can do better. There are plenty of well-researched organizational interventions that we know of that work wonders. Shorter working days. Switching of phones and email after hours. Allowing for mental health days. Installing better support systems for employees. Cultivating a culture of compassion and meaning. Leaders 
speaking up about their own mental health challenges. And of course, increasing knowledge and awareness of stress and burnout within organizations. And just in case you might be worried about this, let me take that persistent misunderstanding out of the way once and for all. No, burnouts don't spread just by talking about them. We need environments that are less toxic and more human. And this is not only for purely philanthropic reasons either. After all, all research points to this. Healthy workers are happier, and happy workers produce better results. It's as simple as that. It is time for a human revolution in the workplace. It's time that leaders took mental health in the workplace way more seriously. For Catherine. For Alice. For Ishmael. For Michael and for Felix. Because he should have his talent and ambition work for him instead of used against him. It's about the example that you, get, that you give and it's about the culture that you install. And when it comes to stress and burnout in the organization, my experience is that leaders are either part of the problem or part of the solution. And it's up to you to decide which one of those sides you like to be on. So here's a question for you. How can you make your culture more human, your employees more resilient, and your company a healthier place to work? What's the very first thing you can change immediately? And if you're listening to this and you happen to be struggling yourself, here's the thing you can do. Take a breath. Experience the air that you are breathing. Look at the people that are sitting beside you. Feel what you are feeling. Allow yourself to be human. And let that be your superpower. Oh my God, what a, what a, <laughs> a super speech and so important. It's, it's uh, well, personally, I, I've, having suffered from this, uh, yeah. uh, it, it, and it went straight to, to my heart. But um, we do have a, a question from our audience. We, but jury members, burning questions. We, this one is, is actually, I think, a, a really good one because it goes to, to a very big question. And I sure. thank you, Juha, Juha Markan, and thank you for, for, sending, for sending this picture. Uh, and I'm sorry, sorry, this, this, uh, you didn't send a picture. Yeah. Thank God you didn't send a picture. You sent a, a message. Oh, actually, <laughs> you are. Thank you. Uh, no, well, but it is the big picture of the story. Uh, it's, it's the why this is. You know, I, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot, having worked in a sweatshop law firm in, in Montreal and in and, uh, and, and New York City and escaped to Finland where it was more humane. Uh, thank you, Finland, uh, for that. But this is a great question from Yuha. Why do you think we speak so little about sustainable work life and its role in a, per, in a person's life? Yes. Why are we here? So why do we speak so, so little, little about sustainable work, work life, life and? And, uh, and its role in, in personal life, in personal health? In yes, mental. well, because I think it's scary. Mm. It's scary to open up about your own experience and it's also scary because you have to let go some control and there is this, I, I, I sort of told it halfway through the story, but there is this idea that talking about stress and talking about burnout makes people burn out, <laughs> which doesn't happen. Talking about this is the most important thing you can do. And it starts by being vulnerable as a leader and giving the right example and sticking to the example as well. Not, so, uh, not only saying stuff, but also set new norms. Mm. It, it, it's... Um, well, you can say it's, it's, it's the good thing to go home early, don't check your emails in weekends, but if you stay, home, stay at work yourself late, mm. and if you s start sending people emails, they're not going to, do, to, to proceed and be a sort of, uh, 
adopt healthy sort of work uh, habits. So it's also what kind. You, yeah. Yes, it's also what you show and what you showcase yourself as a leader. So mm. I think that's well, I'm, an assignment for you all. Mm. The best thing I'm, I'm doing this week is I'm, I'm taking a vacation with my wife, 20 years married, we're going on a cruise, and I don't care what you think at my speaker. I'm doing it. My phone is off. My phone is off. Thank you so much for these insights. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen.